here are the numbers. The numbers are uh, as follows. Uh, the number of jobs added to the Canadian economy, 21,100. So the number is very close to what was expected by economists. The unemployment rate drops again, this time to 5.2%, a remarkably low rate of unemployment in this country. Again, 5.4% was expected. The rate is 5.2%. That's lower than expected and lower than the August number as well, by 20 basis points in each case. The average hourly wages <coughs> are also <coughs> excuse me, weaker than expected. And this may be uh, some good news for the Bank of Canada. 5.2% was the increase in average hourly wages for permanent employees measured from September of 2021 to September of 2022, the end of September 2022. The number comes in at 5.2%. That's meaningfully weaker than the 5.6% number that economists were expecting. Let's flip to the U.S. now. Uh, Non-farm payrolls have come in uh, a little stronger than expected. 263,000 jobs were added on the non-farm payrolls line in the United States. That's, uh, that is, uh, thir the, that is um, versus 255,000 expected. So not a huge variance. I think a lot of economists would call this in line with expectations. The unemployment rate drops in the United States as well and is weaker, uh, is less than what was expected, 3.5%. 3.5% is the unemployment rate in the U.S. I think almost everybody would call that full employment in the United States and indicative of a very tight labor market in that country. 3.7% was expected and 3.7% was the number in August as well. So just like Canada, the unemployment rate in the United States comes in weaker than expected. Let's go to wages in the U.S. They come in in line with expectation. Average hourly earnings on a year-over-year -year basis increase in the United States by 5.0%. That's exactly what was expected by economists and is 20 basis points weaker than what we, uh, than what we saw in August. So there you have the numbers. Let's go to an expert now to talk about these numbers. He is Sebastian Lavoie. Uh, he's chief economist at Laurentia Bank, and he joins us right now. Sebastian, thanks a great deal. Hi, You've heard the numbers. Uh, tell me what yes. you think. First of all, the Canadian numbers. What do we think of that unemployment rate dropping in Canada unexpectedly? Well, uh, I, I think it goes with uh, the stories of uh, the back-to-school season and teachers uh, going back to school after uh, the summer vacation. I think it, it distorts uh, a bit the figure uh, on the positive side because... Uh, we have seen some softness in the job market in Canada prior to the September positive number. Uh, and it reflects the fact that uh, companies uh, cannot find workers first. And secondly, there's a growing number of companies saying, well, uh, I'm not sure about uh, my outlook in terms of sales going forward. So I'm going to ease the pace of hiring. And that's what we see in some of the uh, most uh, sensitive sector to interest rates if we look at uh, employment across industries. How do these numbers look to the Bank of Canada, the wage growth numbers uh, in particular? Again, wage growth uh, in Canada coming in at 5.2% uh, uh, 5. Uh, 5 during the month. It's uh, too high for a central banker like Tiff McLean, aiming for 2% inflation. And I think it's supportive of uh, yesterday's speech from uh, the governor. Uh, saying that uh, uh, they are going to continue ahead uh, with jumbo hikes coming up and uh, at least, I would say, a cumulative increase of 100 basis points in terms of policy rate hikes uh, before the end of the year. Uh, you need uh, unemployment in Canada to get closer to 6%. That's our expectation uh, by mid-year 2023, as uh, Canada is, is likely to enter a, a mild form of recession uh, in early 2023. And accordingly, with unemployment, uh, going up from uh, uh, the 5.2 numbers you just mentioned uh, to uh, about 6%, let's in the summer of next year, uh, this will bring some kind of equilibrium that the central bank is looking for on the job market to is ease there, is there the CPI good, inflation. Is there good news in the fact that the, uh, the wage growth number was weaker than expected and significantly weaker than the August number? Uh, it's a good number relative to expectations, but... Uh, from the Bank of Canada, they uh, will not see that as a good news. You need to taper off uh, this number um, uh, sooner rather than later. But the issue is that with the job market is the resiliency and uh, structural uh, uh, shortfall in terms of supply, especially in Quebec, uh, where the pool of labor force is uh, growing half the pace that's in Ontario. Uh, it's tough. 
uh, for for companies first to find worker to operate smoothly but also it it, it adds on the wage pressure side so it, it, it could be more uh, structural than we think although during during uh, bad economic times and uh, the way things are going south uh, most likely in the us and canada uh, at some point in 2023 uh, usually wage inflation falls uh, because that's when companies or CEOs, as you may have seen as in a survey conducted in the U.S. lately, the majority of CEOs now are, are contemplating the idea of, of job cuts at some point in 2023, uh, as they will see uh, most likely their top sales not going uh, uh, in the right direction. Let's go to the U.S. now. Uh, those uh, non-farm payrolls numbers came in uh, essentially li in line with expectations. 263,000 yeah. jobs added. The expectation was for 255,000. What really stands out is that there's more evidence of an ultra-tight labor market in the United States. The rate of unemployment, which is calculated differently in the U.S. than it is in Canada, but nonetheless it sinks mm -hmm. to 3.5% versus an expectation of 3.7%, and wage growth stays steady uh, actually, it, uh, it was steady w with respect to expectations, declined somewhat mm -hmm. from August. What is your take on the U.S. numbers and, and the, what it means to the U.S. Fed? Uh, for the U.S., what I like is that we have richer data in terms of labor market dynamics in the U.S. relative to Canada. And uh, the numbers indicate uh, a bunch of uh, different things. First, uh, the uh, number of American, Americans quitting their job by themselves as ease, and that's usually what caused wage inflation. So that's why wage inflation is, is going down. Uh, so there's some, uh, I would say, I wouldn't say large compelling evidence that the job market is cooling, but that's the first uh, step that uh, the, the Federal Reserve will like, uh, certainly. And uh, uh, the other thing is that uh, there's less job posting as we've seen earlier this week, according to another report released by the US BLS. And uh, it usually follow, uh, you know, the behavior that we see uh, typically before a recession. So uh, if investors today look at these numbers and you say, well, employment at 3.5% U.S., uh, quite tight condition in Canada, I think they will miss the turning point uh, on the business cycle. Because if you look at some recession like in the uh, in the 70s, especially with, with the U.S. numbers, sometimes the, the perils numbers are still going up when the U.S. enter a recession. So we have to be very careful with that.